Good evening and welcome to the Tuesday, January 10th meeting of the Leon County School Board. We are meeting at the Aquilina Howell Center at 3955 West Pensacola Street in Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, Ms. Rasmussen is attending the memorial services of a former student. She would join us later during this meeting. At this point, I would like to ask our student school board member to introduce the students who will be sharing with us today the Pledge of <coughs> Allegiance and other business opening item, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so giving the pledge today is Addie Reed. She is a fifth grader at Gilcrest Elementary School and she's accompanied by her mother, Leslie Reed. Um, at Gilcrest, she's, in, she's a student council representative. She's in the yearbook club. Uh, she's a safety patrol and she's uh, on the Gilcrest Elementary School uh, news team, and she's in the fifth grade chorus in dance. And uh, some of her honors include being an AR goal achiever, and she's received the Positive Behavior Award. She's interested in dance, singing, music, and art. Great. Yes, yeah, step right up. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Giving the thought for the day this evening is Ryan Williams. She's also a fifth grader at Gilcrest, Gilcrest Elementary School. She's accompanied by her mother, Danielle Williams. Um, Ryan is also student council representative. She's on the morning news, WGES. Uh, she's involved in chorus. Uh, some of her honors include being a Martin Luther King Jr. Dreamers and Doers Award recipient. Uh, she's a creative academics student and a black belt in Taekwondo. Um, some of her interests include uh, volleyball, writing, drawing, math, and raising money on behalf of juvenile diabetes. I'm here representing Gilchrist Elementary School, and I'd love to share some information with you about Katherine Johnson, space scientist for NASA. Currently, there's a movie called Hidden Figures out of the box office that's receiving great reviews. Ms. Ka Johnson calculated the trajectory of NASA's first trip into space, space with astronaut John Glenn. She was so consistently accurate that when NASA began to use computers, they had her check the calculations to make sure they were correct. Our thought for this evening is, and I quote, know how to learn and then want to learn. Katherine Johnson and her colleagues were visionaries and crossed all gender and race lines to inspire generations to dream big. As you begin your meeting tonight, I would want to encourage and inspire the board to dream big when planning for our future. I am a model for our future and I look forward to your impending visions for the leaders of tomorrow. Thank you. Addie, and thank you, Ryan. And would the parents and family members stand and the principal, assistant principal, please stand. <coughs> thank you for being here. <laughs> and we would love to have you stay with us. And of course, if you must leave, then you can. I suspect you have some homework that you'd like to do, but you each are welcome to stay through the board meeting. So, how do you think you did? You know, we talked about that a little bit. You think you did all right? I do too. I think you did a wonderful <laughs> job. Give them another hand. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Moving along in our uh, agenda, Ms. Striplin, would you read the changes and additions, please? Yes, ma'am, I will. The superintendent recommends approval of changes and additions to the January 10th school board agenda as presented. Number one. Item 6.03, approval of personnel actions, replace documentation. Super superintendent has filled the vacant assistant superintendent position with the Division of Teaching and Learning. Number two, item 18.04, McGinnis and Fleming, short form agreement, Rickards High stage lighting. Note at the bottom of the item summary section in this item, uh, geological, geotechnical investigation shall be conducted in accordance with Chapter 18 of the Florida Building Code. Southern Earth Sciences, Inc. is a geotechnical, environmental, and materials consultant on continuing contract. Uh, that was board approved on April 9th, 2013, has been removed. The note does not pertain to this item. 
Number three, add item 22.02, continuing concerns from board member, school board chair, Joy Bowen. Number four, item 5.04, DOE requirements for infrastructure trial. There was added documentation. Number five, item 4.01, recognitions, Goodwill Industries, Big Ben LCS voucher program, students helping students clothing drive. This has been rescheduled for February 28th, school board meeting. Number six, add item 17.04, Capital Region CRTPA School Board Representative. This item is being added in order to meet the city and county appointment deadlines. Number seven, add item 17.05, School Concurrency Coordinating Committee Member Nominations. This item is being added in order to meet the city county appointment deadlines. You have heard the changes and additions read. Is there a motion to receive? Accept? I second. Okay, it's been moved by Ms. Striplin and second by Ms. Lewis Butler. Questions? All in favor? Let it be known by state and I. Aye. Aye. Opposes the same. It passes unanimously. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Superintendent Spotlight, none today. No, ma'am. Do we have any recognitions? That's pulled. Reports to be heard. The District Advisory Council, led by Ms. Cheryl Collier Brown. Good evening. Happy New Year. Happy New Happy Year to you. you. Okay, our meeting once again started off beautifully. Dr. Gale gave a warm welcome to everyone and wished everyone a Happy New Year. And then we had the pleasure of our board chair to join us on Thursday evening. And we were so excited that she was with us. And we could tell she was excited to be with us also. She expressed how much the board appreciates um, the Dyke members and their time and their interest in our Leon County School System. And she also reminded us that our opinions, suggestions, and whatever is very accepted by you all and you all enjoy hearing and listen to what we have to say. The agenda was accepted by the members. We had one Lamana change, Jillian Gregory and Stu Greenberg, um, substituted from Dr. Hightower who was en route and she got there just as they finished but that goes to show how we were prepared for everything and the minutes were approved by the majority as well. Then we had one one of I think one of our best practices had been presented. Regina Brown, principal of ACE and Martha Clark gave us such a beautiful wonderful video presentation of all the wonderful activities that are happening at ACE. Also, they also wanted us to know that's one of the best kept secrets in Leon County Schools. They're, they enlighten us that we have three satellite campuses that, that is, which will be convenient for our students who may not be able to travel out to Trojan Trail. ACE is a national GED testing site. I didn't even know that. And each student that was in the video presentation express how much having the personal touch and being able to interact with teachers instead of going online and studying. So that was a big thing and they, they wanted to let us know that that's how they've been so successful in getting their GED. Upcoming assessments, Jillian Gregory gave us a sheet with all the coming assessments and getting us prepared and she promised us that she would be back. <laughs> go over some more testing and then policy and re revisions now all of the policies and I'm just going to read the numbers um, policy 1129 9114-6116. All of them passed after we had a nice presentation by Ashley Scott, Tamika Billingsley, and um, James Halkoff. And also Jillian and Stu Greenberg was there to discuss that. And that's it. And then we had site questions. We didn't have very many site questions, but of course, during the wrap up, the calendar came up. So, haha, -ha, that was something. So, we had a lot of questions. And of course, Dr. Gale said that we would revisit the calendar. So, they had a lot of questions, but I'm not going to bring those up to you all. Okay, that's it. Have a good evening. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate that report, Ms. Brown. 
And I will just say, board members, that we are so fortunate to have the active participation of our district advisory council. I shared with them that when I first entered the board, I was assigned to the district advisory council as one of my duties. And it was really one of the best things that I think I could have done because I discovered that the district advisory council was made up of all of the SAC groups uh, representatives and it provided me the opportunity to learn more about this district. They do a wonderful job and yes Cheryl we do listen when DAC speaks and that's why your 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 group and your participation is so important. Thank you for your leadership and thank you Miss uh, Dr. Gales for what you do too. All right student advisory council on today. Title one advisory council no meeting today. F LDOE requirements for infrastructure trial is up next. Good evening, Superintendent Hanna, school board members. This report is to share with you the status of our readiness regarding computer-based testing in Leon County Schools. Uh, as you may be aware, the spring 2017 Florida Standards Assessment Test Administration, most of the assessments are computer-based. This spring, the third grade math assessment has been added to the catalog of online assessments that will be administered. At this time, essentially only third grade reading, fourth through seventh grade writing, and fifth and eighth grade science assessments are paper-based. All other reading, English language arts writing, and math assessments are computer-based. Districts are required by the department to complete two tasks. In your handout for tonight's meeting, you will find the originating email from Chancellor Lyons that addresses both of these action items. The first requirement is that all traditional and charter schools within, within each district re, uh, complete a certification. This certification is an analysis of the number of computers available for testing on a campus, the number of students testing on a particular assessment, and the number of days required by each school to fully administer the assessment on their campus. This task was completed in December by our schools and reported on time to the department. Um, we complete that task in-house before then just to make sure because if we're just ordering computers in December, we've got a problem. But that certification occurred in December and that was submitted. The second requirement is an infrastructure trial test. As noted in the memo from the department, the infrastructure trial test is to be completed in each school district by February 11th. In Leon County Schools, uh, it is scheduled to be completed on Wednesday, February 1st. This test of the system is a 30-minute trial to be conducted anytime between 10 and 11 a.m. on the 1st. Schools have the flexibility to choose how they administer this assessment, this practice test, uh, in any manner they choose. For example, my understanding is that at some elementary schools, they use this as a practice run for their students, assigning the computer that the student will use, orienting, orienting them to the machine and the tools that are available. At other levels, particularly secondary, my understanding is that they use an AV club as a clicking team in the identified testing spaces. So they line up a series of computers, they have them configured, and the student or the AV students click through. For schools and district personnel, this state mandated infrastructure trial test is an opportunity for us to complete a dry run before the assessment window actually starts. At this time, I've asked Mr. Nimmons, our Technology and Information Services Director, who will uh, report to you about where we believe our current status is as we move into this period of time. Okay, Good evening. Good evening. So I have the task tonight to explain the picture that's on the wall here. And what I'd first like to, to point out, the state of Florida computer-based testing started in 2011 when the state mandated this. So it's not new to us. We've been doing it for five years. I think we've gotten pretty good at it. We know what it takes to do this right. So it went from needing a number two pencil, right, to a computer system. Well, obviously that's a lot more complex than just showing up with a pencil. So it, it makes a challenge a little harder to take these tests and be ready for them. The, the funny thing to me is students don't seem to mind because the foreign object in their hand today is a, is, is a pencil, not the keyboard. They're always you know, doing this with keys, so they're, they're quite used to it. Uh, the one thing I will tell you, though, and I've been doing this for 36 years now, is that technology will humble you. And what I mean by that is when you need it most, 
that's what it will teach you that it's in charge and not you. So the whole thing about the infrastructure trial test that's mandated by the DOE is to make sure that you're ready. And the only way you can be ready is to have tested those systems to make sure they are ready for that for that student to use. Because my number one thing is when that child sits down on that computer, it needs to work. We do not need to add the stress of that system not working and them having to be moved all over the place. So our number one goal is to do these tests, do them well, and make sure when that child sits down, it's ready to go for them. Now, every school district isn't as fortunate as Leon County Schools because I believe we have some of the best people involved in this. And, and I'm going to point Dale Joyner out back there, and he's not going to like this, but Dale, if you could stand up. He's my network guy. He's the one that makes sure the network's ready. So we're fortunate to have Dale there. We're also fortunate to have, and Mike Wolgamuth, and I'll make Mike stand up too, and in every one of our schools we have what we call a technology contact. And these are the folks, the technology contacts, are the ones that actually identify the computers, make sure they've been tested, and make sure the rooms are ready. They, along with the testing coordinators, they all make this happen. The good news is we know how to do this. We've been doing this for quite some time. Um, so I'm going to talk about each of these major components, and we're going to start with devices. Mm -hmm. There are going to be 8,000 devices used in the testing this year. That will range from a desktop to a laptop to tablets. We identified the specific devices that we are going to be using. Now, one of the things you need to understand is that the DOE mandates a certain specification for those devices, and all our machines meet that. So we actually identify the devices we're going to use. The, we then identify the rooms that the testing is going to occur in, and we also include spare units because what I've learned, no matter how much testing you do, the day of the test, something's going to break that didn't, you didn't expect. So what we want to be able to do when that occurs, we quickly move the child to another computer that's ready to go and minimize the disruption to that student taking that test. So in devices, the main thing that we're doing is we're running the software that helps us confirm the configurations correct and that it, and the software operates properly. For example, when the children take the test, they have to use a highlighter. We need to make sure when they go to use the highlighter, it's actually going to work. They have to use the calculator that pops up on the screen. So we have to test to make sure the calculator is going to work. And some even have to use text-to-speech. So all those things like that, we have to test each and every machine to make sure it's configured properly and works to do that. And that's why this is so involved. It's very important. I don't want a kid to have a problem when he sits down to take the test. We also confirm connectivity to the network, whether that's plugged into computers plugged into the wall or connecting to a wireless access point in the ceiling. So after this test, we'll be able to reasonably say with confidence that we'll be ready. And my experience, based upon what we've done with the team we have here, I have great confidence that we'll have no problem with devices, and that's why I rate it as a green, good to go on the, on the, on the light up there. Next is bandwidth. Now, bandwidth is an interesting thing, and it's hard to explain, but I like to use a couple of analogies. I think it's bandwidth as a pipe, or another analogy, and a pipe that the data trans, uh, flows to, right? But another way to look at bandwidth is a hose. If you're out with a garden hose and you're watering your garden, that water coming out is the data. And you could think of it as a data going out in the cloud where this test is, right? So if you've got a garden hose, you've got to stream this big round. But then, if we need more bandwidth, and we're, we've got a lot of students taking, uh, taking a test, we may need the fire hydrant hose, right? So it moves a lot more water in a much faster time. So that's what we're talking about, bandwidth. Do we have enough bandwidth? And that's part of what the test does, is to make sure. Now what I will tell you, having done this for five years, the bandwidth we use every day for normal operations is more than we use when we test. So I'm not concerned about bandwidth. Uh, the good news is, like I said, I have folks like Dale, and we're fortunate enough to be a large enough district, and this is probably not true for smaller districts that don't have the staff or the money to have the systems in place, but we actually have automated systems that allow us to track bandwidth real time. Dale can tell you any point in time exactly what the bandwidth is at Rickards. We can see when there's a spike, something's going on. So during testing, what uh, Dale does is he monitors that and if something starts getting out of line then he can start throttling we call it throttling stopping other traffic from interfering with the testing data and so that's what he'll do to make sure that our bandwidth is not an issue so because of that reason I rate our bandwidth as being a green as well last area here is the state testing servers and software 
I can't speak to what what this test does for the state. They don't tell me that information, if anything. In years past, I think it was used to do what they called load testing. And how would I explain load testing? If I have 2,000 computers, 2,000 students sitting on a computer hitting the enter key, how well does that software react to 2,000 students? When I make that 20,000 students, does the software st does it still work or does it get slow? If I make that 200,000 students, is that still working? So that's what we call load testing. To me, load testing on that state software is their responsibility, not ours. Our responsibility is for the devices and the bandwidth here. Now, a concern has been raised about having to use students to do this, um, this uh, testing on the machines. And that is a problem because, for example, at a high school, we'll use 500 computers to do testing, right? If we, use, if we try to not use students, we don't have that amount of staff. We could try to get volunteers. You could see the challenge that we have, right? So the probability is we will have to use students' tests, and we, we don't like to do that, but it's sort of where we're at right now. So based upon that, and I agree, I don't like using students for testing. I, testing, I don't think we should have to do that. What we're going to do, I've spoken to uh, Ms. Woods, Jillian, Mike, and Dale, and what we've come up with is we're going to get together and write a letter to the DOE and from the technical side and say, please consider this these options and we think this might work and we'll just see what they say. Um, our specific recommendations is for allowed districts our size that we have the systems in place to certify that our bandwidth is sufficient. We don't need to test that. We know what our bandwidth is. And finally, the other thing we're going to ask is allow the consideration of using the practice test uh, to account for the infrastructure tile software they use now. So here's what's going on. The requirement is before any student can take a test, uh, a computer-based test during this period, they have to do a practice test. Well, when you look at the practice test, it's testing the very same things that we're testing uh, when we're doing ours. It's saying, and, and the purpose behind the practice test is to make sure that student knows the tools that are available to them that they're going to face when they're answering these questions. Some questions require them to highlight things. Some questions will require them to connect lines. Some questions will require them to use a calculator. So the purpose behind the practice test is to make sure that that student is familiar with all those things. Well, guess what? In the process to do that, they just did my infrastructure trial test. So as long as we get, so I think we can kill two birds with one stone if they'll consider that. Let us use the practice test as our infrastructure trial test. And that's what we're going to shoot for. I don't know if the DOE will accept that or not, but we're going to ask for that. And that's my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Ms. Wood? Um, thank you so much, first of all, for taking the time to explain this. And I just wanted to give a little bit of background. I mentioned it, this at the last school board meeting that I was concerned about this. When we're testing basically 8,000 computers, which means we're going to disrupt, you know, 8,000, 30 minutes, which will turn into an hour of instructional time. I think that's a serious thing. And if it were just that, it would be just like a little paper cut, you know. We could, we're used to it. We get directives all the time from DOE. You have to do this. You have to do that. And, and at schools, they get used to it. But our testing situation is such that I feel like it's uh, death by a thousand cuts. And so this is one thing. Lincoln High School, 577 students, they'll have to disrupt their day to do this. And then when real testing comes around, lots and lots of students and classes will be disrupted for testing. So sort of a two-part thing. I'm, I'm glad you're going to send this to DOE. I would like to ask the board and the superintendent if we can make it a little stronger and say the school board and the superintendent request what you have said, which is that the DOE think about this. You know, they were given, I have the number here, $109 million last year for assessments. That's a lot, that's the most they've ever gotten for assessments. If what you say is correct, and I'm sure it is, Bill, that we have the devices, we can test them ourselves, we have the bandwidth. The only thing that's missing is that the testing company, in this case I believe it's AIR, they want to test their software. Now my understanding is that uh, companies can create software packages called bots and they can simulate being on the computer because I want everyone to understand this is not a practice test. This is our kids 
sitting for 30 minutes and going da, 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 on a computer, which is a complete waste of their time and a complete you know, in, uh, disruption of instruction. So I hope that the school board and the superintendent will see that this is a, a good recommendation. I agree with you. We should be able to do this in a practice test. And if the testing company needs to test it beforehand, I think that's their responsibility to create the software to do that. So um, I appreciate that. And I guess I'd like to get the sense of the board, and I have one other request too, but Madam Chair, if you don't mind, I'd just like to get a sense of the board of, then, I mean, I could just make a motion, I guess. Okay, well, is there a discussion prior? Let's, let's see, we can just have discussion. All right, comments, questions? I do have one, and perhaps I heard it answered in the presentation, but I'll just ask it again for clarity. The number of time, the hours that students actually spend in the practice sessions, do we know that amount of time? Is that four hours, five, 30 minutes? I'm just. So, the, so for the infrastructure trial, that's a 30 minute block of time. That's the clicking, but doesn't account Only. like moving down to the, to the lab and all that kind of stuff. So the clicking for the infrastructure is 30 minutes. But to Bill's point, the students also have to take a practice test. And the practice test is the highlighting part. The practice test shows the students where the embedded calculator is and mm -hmm. make sure that the audio check is working. And that practice test has between 15 and 20 items. And the students go in uh, a second time, and they are oriented to the pra on the practice test. There is not educational value associated with the practice test. There never has been. The items are repeated. So there's not, and, and they're not on level. It's really just oriented orienting them to the technology in the platform. And, and that takes about 15, 20 okay. minutes in the lab once the students get in because they have to log in on a secure browser and there's, you know, sign in and passwords and those kinds of things. So this is an addition to this the infrastructure, infrastructure trial. Right. So okay. it's separate. Yeah. And so I think to Bill's point, we what our thought is, you know, kill two birds, one stone. Let's let's talk about let's engage in conversations with the department to see if they can create some sort of um, one stop thing. We understand that we want to get the students oriented. They have to be oriented to the technology and the platform and perhaps doing it one time will, will, will be sufficient. Okay. Mr. Superintendent, what prohibits time? us from doing that now? Why can't we do the, use the practice test for this exercise as well? There are two different windows? Two different no, they both go through a secure browser. Um, my understanding from conversations that I've had with the <coughs> department, wearing my director <coughs> of testing hat, is that the practice test is not long enough that currently the practice test is only between 15 and 20 items per grade level per assessment, and that the infrastructure trial test is 50 items. So they want us to be clicking, they want the students to be clicking longer. So the, the trial test is, are there specific guidelines that they follow and questions we can't combine we can't just extend the practice test like we'll do the practice test for 15 or well that's our request so that that's where we would like to um, see get the flavor of the school board and the superintendent and then see what we can do with the department I think for the 16 17 school year um, we're fast approaching the infrastructure trial test for this year I think maybe it's something that we maybe perhaps can engage in, maybe get some of our colleague districts around the state, um, the Association for State Admit Test Administrators, and see if we can come together to develop something where we can have one practice test over an extended period of time that can be used as the infrastructure. The issue is the infrastructure trial test, everyone's doing it on the same day. So that's really where you're supposed to mimic the, the most extensive use of your uh, bandwidth. But if we have the practice test administered in a similar way as the infrastructure trial tests, we can mimic that bandwidth usage while at the same time orienting the students to the technology that's part of the assessment and on the platform. And so that's really kind of where we're trying to move the ball forward long term. Ms. Triplin? Thank you. Um, so we're actually, have, have we had dialogue other than just sending a formal letter, which I think is a great idea, and what you're saying makes absolute perfect sense. Have we had any dialogue with them as to have they considered this possibility, and do they have any response to it verbally? Um, I have spoken with the department, and um, we have not had dialogue about combining to one, mm. but we have had dialogue about the why do we have to do both. 
Okay. And that's and that's where I got the answer that because the infrastructure because the practice test is only fifteen questions, right. they want it to be longer, and so that's really that's where I got that answer. So um, I would imagine we're not the only district having this conversation. I would imagine it's going to be statewide. And is there any combined effort? Which I think I heard you talk about. But but what about prior to this February first or twelfth tenth deadline? Whatever it is that they're mm -hmm. the day that they said we need to do it. February tenth. 11th, 11th. 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 Um, is there any, I mean, is there any possibility of, of districts combining and, and, and second part to that, is there, a, is there a consequence if we opt out and refuse to do it? Um, so there are two, let me, the first question is there, there are no state meetings or opportunities for us to get together as an entity, as a collective entity between now and the due date. Uh, FOIL, FOIL was cut short last, at the, the state assessment meeting was cut short because of one of the hurricanes. And so there wasn't a very robust conversation at that point. Uh, FOIL is the Florida Organizational Instructional Leaders and that meeting is in May. And so that, and then the FAFSA meeting, which is the State Association of, of State assessment administrators, that isn't until that time period either. So um, at this point, there's really not an opportunity for us to leverage 67 districts collectively sure. before then. Um, your second question is, um, are we allowed to not do it? And the answer is that we have a letter from the chancellor mandating this. And so that would be something we would need direction to pursue further, but that would be not something that I could answer right now. But there have been no given outlines as to you will be penalized in this manner if you don't partake in this. No, I, the conversations, you know, that I have as a director of testing is this is, you know, this is the... This is what you're going to do. <laughs> this, is, this is the expectation, and um, this is your opportunity as a school district to make sure there are no problems. Sure. With, if there are problems, you know, and if there are problems on days of testing or day, you know, it, this is your dry run. Sure. Mr. So. Butler? Yeah, you know, um, so what they're saying, uh, if you don't consolidate, and you said we're trying to meet the February 1st deadline the de Leon County. February 11th is the deadline for the state. Right. Mm -hmm. We selected February 1st right. to... Right, we're trying to do the first, which is good. Uh, but I was just, uh, since you might not, might not be able to consolidate, we still will go forward, right? If they, uh, I mean, if you communicate with them, yes. there's DOE, and we still have to go forward. Is my understanding, unless I get direction otherwise, to engage in a different conversation that we would continue to move forward for this school year and that we have some work to do and see what we can do to influence for 1718? Yeah, because if we have any concerns about the use of the tools, then they will tell us you had opportunity and you didn't use it. That is correct. Sorry, okay, thank you. That is correct. All right. Um, I, I certainly do support not having our students out of class any more than it's absolutely necessary, which is one of the points I have heard mentioned here. And it makes pretty good common sense to me that what we're trying to do is to keep our kids in school and also to prevent um, hmm, us being caught up in some, I dare not say testing errors, but trials and errors, errors, errors for our children. I think I heard that. And so at this point, the letter is written or the recommend we, we, we will wait for it where we were okay, presenting this wait. evening okay. to get guidance from okay from I'm the school board from okay. the superintendent to proceed to next steps we don't usually do letters i know we've done some resolutions mm -hmm. miss williams could you speak to that please yes madam chair um traditionally when the board is asked to as a body um <laughs> speak on an issue it's by resolution and um, there's an agenda item that is on the board agenda for the board to consider mm -hmm. move second vote on and so we're really not in the proper posture for there to be a motion second and vote um, and like I said it's usually done in, this, in the form of a resolution looking at our timelines um, we're, we're kind of running out of time um, I'm not sure if this is something that would want to be brought to the next board meeting which mm -hmm. is the 24th um, if it needs to go out before then, then it may be something that needs to be worked through with between staff and superintendent. Um, but right now we're on, we're, we, this is a, a report to be heard, so this is not an item that can be voted on. It's just information for the board. Um, and we don't have a, a, an, a, an agenda item, we don't have a resolution for the board to, to act on today. Um, so um, I, would, I would caution against just moving and seconding on, 
on to uh, to vote on an idea without there being something written for the public and for board members to specifically know what you're voting in favor uh, for or against. Um, so I guess my question is, is this something that can be put on the, J the January 24th board meeting for the board, or is this something that maybe needs to go out So I think for, if we're talking about the 16-17 um, school year, this school year, and if we're talking about the infrastructure trial test that's scheduled for February 1st, um, if you do, a, we could, a resolution, um, depending on what the content of that resolution is, the resolutions that I'm familiar with are statements not action item, yeah. yeah. And so that's something we certainly could put together a resolution for by January 24th and have that vetted and, and move forward with a resolution. Um, if I would, I'm not sure how to answer the well, I, action I guess item the part. The question that I had, and I don't know that I need to be asking questions at all, is um, if the board were to approve something on the 24th, does that give oh enough time? time? Well, then that's something we could. To we, I mean, we could certainly forward that on to the, the well, Department of Education. But what we're saying, though, is we have schools. You know, we would need to work with forty-eight okay. schools. Right. To, to do that. You, as I'm listening to this, I'm, I'm comfortable with the resolution happening on the 24th. But I think that the idea and what we're trying to do may be pushing a little more urgency to what we want to do. So that letter that you were going to write, could that letter not be done? and sent by uh, the superintendent and staff to the um, Department of Education, which would say include our, our thoughts. Just one second. Would I think it can, but <clears throat> aren't we conceding that we're going to go ahead and do the test? And yes. the letter is just, we're going to do it this year. Right. We don't appreciate it. Right. How can we do better next year? Right. Okay. Right. Okay. And that's why I would really appreciate <clears throat> if we could pass a resolution, okay. I think if if our school board stands up and our superintendent with leadership, uh, we might be able to influence the entire state because if we just complain about it, it won't go anywhere. But I think it's time for the schools and the school systems to stand up to things like this and say, you know, we don't think this is right and we don't want our children being used in this way and we want uh, a different solution. So I, I appreciate everyone's willingness to listen to this and to start moving forward and I'd love to see a resolution at the next school board meeting. When does the practice test happen? So the practice test happens anytime between February now and actual testing time. So for example if a student enrolls on March 3rd, which is the first day of assessments for the writing part, they have to do a practice, I'm sorry, they have to do a practice test prior to um, the actual test administration on let's on March 3rd. Um, but if students are enrolled now and Miss Gregory Miss Gregory's seventh grade English class is assigned to the computer lab on every Wednesday. One of the Wednesdays between now and testing, Miss Gregory would have to schedule a let you know part of her lesson plan in the computer lab to include the practice test. So I think, and we know they need to do the practice test. Mm -hmm. They it's have to be familiar with their environment, right. their testing environment. Yeah. So it, to me, it makes sense. Like you said, if we can convince them to kill two birds with one stone, and let's yeah. figure out a way to combine the two activities. Right. The one other thing I wanted to mention is um, my understanding is, and you're, you're the expert so I'll ask you, is that using students for this task isn't the most efficient way to, to do a, a load test anyway because stu we're depending on students following directions to go click, 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 click for 30 minutes and a computer can do that much more effectively. A computer program can be, is that true Bill? Yes, I mean, I, I think that's very possible. They have to write the software. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Yes, I, I do think that's true. They'd have to write the software to do that. Um, so these are all possibilities. So we, we're kind of using students for something that a com computer could do better, and they wouldn't have to miss their class. So so is that something that perhaps we could be included in the letter as to yes. why we're asking I for this? So. I expect that that would be. Did you have something to say, Ms. Rasmussen? You appear to be a little anxious. <laughs> I would just caution that because it would appear that we have a very viable and legitimate alternative to propose that we could frame it in a positive as opposed to this, you know, I know we all feel mm -hmm. strongly right. about the use of our kids' time, but I think we can, if we frame it in a positive way, our chances of success right. might be better. Sure. All right. Well, then, of course, we will not only entertain that, but we'll make certain that that happens when we get the written word on paper. Okay. Yes, I'm going to ask one more thing, and I, I'm, yes. I'm sorry, this is sort of a burning issue for That's me, okay. so sorry for taking up so much time, but um, I would 
request from the superintendent, and we have actually already spoken about this, to look at the amount of time that we are going to be using for testing, the amount of instruction that's going to be interrupted, because I really don't think the public has any idea of how many thousands of hours we lose, uh, not only just to the actual testing, but to the practice testing, to the mm -hmm. getting ready for the test, uh, shifting classes, the media centers get blocked up, computer classes get kicked out. I would just like for us to see those numbers so that we can talk about them. And, and I think if we're the ones that need to speak up about this, so uh, I would appreciate that if you're willing to, Superintendent. Ms. Gregory and I have already discussed this, and we've gone from, what, three to six days now? Oh. It used to be three days. Now it's now it's two days of writing, two days of reading, two days of, of, um, of math. So we've doubled, the state's doubled that requirement. Uh, and to your, to your point, um, I think we've come a long way in reducing the amount of non-instructional time, but we have a lot of, a lot of our schools, middle schools especially, the kids were not, I mean, when testing was going on, we lost weeks and weeks of instruction. I think we've done better given the number of devices now that we have in our schools. But uh, I, I, it would be interesting to, to find the results of that, and we've talked about moving forward with that survey. Thank you. Okay. And that can, Ms. Madam Chair, that can be one of the whereas clauses. I'm yes. not suggesting we should shy away from it. I just think to the extent that we can frame it in a positive, we'll probably get further. Thank you. Okay. Good discussion. Good discussion. I think we have our marching orders. We know what we're going to be doing. We know what dates we're looking at. We know that we're going to be pulling something together in a positive fashion, and we are all on the same page and on the same team, right? Good. Thank you. Further questions, comments? Good job. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Moving along in the agenda, I believe we're at items 18. Are we not there? Six. I'm sorry. Items of consent. I moved too fast. Um, not 18 yet. Not yet. Um, is there a motion? I move the item of the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Lewis Butler, second by Wood. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposes aye. the same. It passes four. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And now we're ready for item 18. Madam Chair. Yes, Can Mr. I, Superintendent. One comment about item 6.03, the, the personal, uh, uh -huh. personal action. As you know, uh, Mr. Crow requested before the holidays to return to a school, and he's now the principal of Deer Lake Middle School, and by all accounts doing a wonderful job, as I knew he would. Uh, in the meantime, that left a vacancy for an assistant superintendent of uh, academic services, and I'm proud tonight to announce Ms. Jillian Gregory will be filling that role as assistant, superint assistant superintendent of academic services. So wow. congratulations. congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent, and thank you, Ms. Gregory, for the services that you rendered in the other position, <coughs> and we look forward to the energies that you will bring to this one. Very good, very good. All right, now we're ready for item 18.01, which is approval to advertise uh, amendments to policy 7450, property inventory for public hearing and adoption on February 14, 2017. Is there a motion? I do need a motion. I do need a motion. So moved. Second. Moved by Wood, second by Lewis Butler. Questions? Comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposes? The same. It passes unanimously. Item 18.02, which is a public hearing on adoption. Not, nope, nope, not on adoption, for adoption. The superintendent recommends, following a public hearing, approval of amendments to policy 2370.01, virtual instruction and policy 5460, graduation requirements effective January 11th, 2017. Favor approval. Second. We've got to open the uh, public hearing first. Right. Are there any speakers? No speakers. No speakers, so we close the public hearing. Now we're ready for the motion, which was move approved, move approved yep. by Ms. Triplin, second by second. Lewis Butler. All in favor? Questions? Aye. Questions? All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Opposes the same. It passes unanimously. 18.3, which is also a public hearing. 
for adoption in where in which the superintendent recommends that following a public hearing approval of amendments to policy 2431 enter scholastic athletics policy 2431.01 participation by transfer student policy 2431.05 athletic injuries prevention and treatment program and policy 5610.05 Participation in extracurricular activities effective January 11th, 2017. Uh, there are speakers. The public hearing is open. No speakers. no speakers. The public hearing is closed. Comments or questions? None. Madam is there a motion? Sorry. Talk about that. Motion. I move 18.03. Second. We? Second for the purpose of discussion. Agreed. Good. All right. Discussion. I thought we talked yesterday at the, we, we had a bit of a conversation around this item at our pre-agenda meeting. Yes, we did. Um, and along with that was part of the conversation that because it was supposed to be a public hearing tonight, I think it's important for the benefit of the public to maybe have, was uh, Mr. Bell going to speak? I think he is prepared to do that. Mr. Bell, would you speak? Mr. Superintendent, is Mr. Bell prepared to speak? <laughs> Mr. Bell is always prepared. Then, Mr. Bell, please speak. <laughs> Thank you, you Ms. Rasmussen. Um, got a little PowerPoint that we're working on. Uh, basically, this is an <clears throat> overview of revisions to policies and the addition of one policy. Um, these revi revisions are because of legislative changes that occurred, which caused us to have to adjust some of our policies and develop some new ones. Um, the first one, uh, 24-3, is base our basic policy um are you there go to the next one okay on our philosophy our missions and all that for kids participating in sports it basically outlines what they have to have a physical permission all that kind of stuff uh, we're adding to that policy 5610.05 which um, adds language that was put in in, uh, in law about um, transfer students and about things that can prohibit you from playing and what needs to be in the student code of conduct, how we need to advertise these changes. Uh, we'll move on to the first one, 2431.01, 20, which was the one which was basically the most, had the most questions surrounding it. Um, in the past, um, you were eligible where you started school. And if you ever transferred during the school year, uh, either you had to meet one of the exceptions set forth by the FHSAA, which there were several, or you had to go before an appeals um, committee, uh, FHSA appeals, for them to approve you to be able to participate. The law has changed. It says when you transfer, you can become e eligible immediately at the school that you transfer to. However, you can't be eligible for the same sport if you were playing if you were running cross country at at leon and you had to transfer for some reason during that season you could not play that sport unless you met one of the following exemptions okay which they've set aside and in statute there are and that's on the next slide uh, student transfers he can be seek immediate eligibility um, However, if a student uh, does not participate in the same sport, the following criteria have to apply. In other words, here's are reasons that you can participate in the same sport. One of them, and these, these are mandated by the legislature, uh, if you have a parent of an active duty military officer and you have to move, then you're granted eligibility immediately. Um, uh, if a child's been relocated due to um, foster care placement, they can become eligible immediately. Uh, if a child, due to a court order, a change of custody, separation or divorce, serious illness, they can become eligible immediately. Uh, letter D is authorized for good cause. That's where the legislature put the burden on each district to determine what they would consider good cause for a kid to be eligible immediately. So the FHSA is now out of the transfer of students. It's, it's in our hands when students transfer. Okay, that's on the next slide. And with the recommendation of NEOLA, which gives us a lot of advice on policies, um, 
we decided the following, or basically me and, and, and Kelly met and decided these were good suggestions because some of them incorporate some of the old exep exemptions that FHSAA used and some are new. Uh, one is if a family makes a complete move from one neighborhood to another, which would cause a, a change. You know, they want to change schools because now they've relocated themselves or if they move from another state to Tallahassee, okay? Complete and family move. They could be eligible immediately. Um, if a student gets married and they change residency because they, you know, now they're living with their wife or their husband and they establish residency somewhere, then they could, they could be eligible at their new zone school. Um, the next one, uh, if a student is reassigned due to school board policy, we have over to under, we have choice programs, they can become eligible immediately. Uh, D, which is one I think which was a little bit misunderstood yesterday, if a student transfers from the current school within the first 20 days of the new school, because they've been accepted into a previously applied for magnet program, charter school or private school, that's where most of the questions came up. I and mean, I think the concern was, could they transfer any time during those 20 days? And that's not the case. Typically, we apply for these magnet programs in March and April and get accepted. Okay, so if a child had applied for that and been denied because it filled up, but after school started, there was an opening, and the, that person was the next in line, they could be offered that seat, and then we would allow them to continue their eligibility if they started playing a sport at the previous school. Does that make sense? But we wouldn't let somebody just apply that day. Say they started a school and they saw they were going to get cut. Oh, well, I'm going to apply for this magnet. No, they have to have previously applied for this program. Wait, stop. Go back. I'm sorry. Yes, With that particular thought, would you just reiterate it again, stated? Before school starts, correct? Yes, before school starts. They would have had to apply. Before yes, they would have okay. had to apply for this magnet program back when everybody else right. applied. Before school right. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the program might have filled up. Sometimes they don't get accepted. Well, school starts and maybe it's not full and so they can take more kids so they'll call us okay you've now been accepted into our program I'd love to come but I've already started playing volleyball at this school am I going to be ineligible because I accept what I applied for well we're saying yes they would be mm -hmm. I have a okay Ms. Triplin can we just can we stop right there for just a minute yes. just because that's the one that seems to be that one and a both cause are just a little the way I read D, if I were to read it as a parent without you explaining it, I would read the student transfers from his or her school within the first 20 school days to a new school. Then it gives, throws in this some suggested language. Sort of reminds me of I.E. like the Boy Scouts. I, I really feel was like, well, I think a lot of, I think a lot of organizations, they didn't understand that. What do you mean like the Boy Scouts? So I think we're throwing in something in parentheses here that that doesn't define it, it correctly. It always comes back to the Boy Scouts. <laughs> <laughs> Never the Girl Scouts. It's back to the Boy Scouts. Yeah, and only because we had so many organizations, or at least I did, that are like, why the Boy Scouts not us? And so back to this. Forget the Boy Scouts. Um, I, I, I think if we really mean unless you've been accepted to a magnet program in which you applied for prior to the school year, we need to state that exactly. without it being, oh, an IE, yeah. sort of these people. Um, so I, I, I think agree. that one needs to be, I think D needs to be clarified. Um, and then A, I think we talked about, so I hear you, I hear you saying whole family, but in here, A says, with a person with whom he or she has been previously living. So I'm just that one, if if we mean whole family, I'm not sure that one also doesn't specify well, whole family. I mean, in, there's a lot of situations the out there. We all know that. the policy book, they used to specify what does a complete family move, move mean, and they spelled it out. You know, everyone living in the house previously has moved. Um, all their bills go there. Um, they've got, you know, they had, and we could list those. I mean, I have them, and we can, we can put them in here and list what a complete family move means, mm -hmm. you know. But this doesn't say a complete family move. It says with a person to whom, with a person. So if mom and or dad persons. divorce or separate and little Joey goes with mom and only mom, that would qualify, right? Or what, or what if brother moved? What if 20-year-old what if <clears throat> brother moved out and he says he moved with brother? 
that would be considered a uh, a homeless child or an you know a, a, an independent child on their own, and they can go register to any school right now. We allow that. If some kid comes up and says, "Hey, I'm living on my own," we'll let them register. And I think what she's saying. So, if it, and this could happen if there's a kid that's living with his parents in one school zone, and his brother is off in college living in the Godby school zone. The kid gets upset at the school he's at goes oh, I'm gonna live with my brother and take advantage of mm hey -hmm. it's not meant for that I mean and those things will happen right so that's why the language was in there in a complete uh, complete family move into your point too but you and you definitely have a point about if parents split and the boy said I'm going to live with my mama and that doesn't satisfy a because it's not a complete family move once they've once the parents split and the child decides he wants to live with mama well that's where he's established residence for that school year now if he changes and decides he wants to go over and live with dad okay he'd have to be reassigned by the district to be eligible at that school we, we you know because it's not the same person they were living with when he established residence at the school when school started but, but, but go ahead but a, a literal read of letter a says nothing about the whole family right Right now. It says the student moves due to a move by the student and a person. Or persons. Or persons. Or persons. So I just want to be clear about if, you know, if you're reading the letter of what it says. And, and if, if, and I guess that's why we're having this discussion. This is our policy that we're about to we're talking about what we, how we are going to interpret this. Is that where we are, Mr. Bell? Okay, so it looks like we've got a couple of issues in here. And if we've got them, then we know that the parents are going to have some. So at this point, and how do we clean that up to meet the, the needs of clarity, Madam Attorney? Do we have to pass it tonight, or can we? No, no we no. don't. Not pass it tonight. Um, send it back to staff to work through okay. with some of the suggestions. Take into account some of the suggestions that you provided. What that would do, though, is start the clock back. So when it comes back to you all, it would come back to you all as an approval to advertise. Mm -hmm. And then well, it, once you approve it with revised language, once you approve it, then it would be advertised for the appropriate period. Then it would come back um, to for adoption. Because so we'd have to start the, the, the clock back again. It can't have be different. amended tonight because it's already been advertised. Exactly. Is that correct? Okay, right. exactly. So, Madam Chair, if I might. Yes. Then my question is, how, Mr. Superintendent, would you anticipate Im implementing E and F? And that's what I was going to. Excuse me. Special assignment by the superintendent or undue hardship? And, I, and I'm not suggesting we don't need some flexibility because I do. We are human beings, and this is messy. And but we, you know, sometimes those loopholes are big enough to drive a truck through. So right, that's a loophole. Well, I think it's, it's something we need to we need to address. Or I need to talk about with Mr. Bell. You know, it's a lot of like the school choice thing in the reassignment office and the appeals process. You know, it's it can be <laughs> you can drive a truck through that. And so I'm I'm trying to close it where you can't you, know, you can't do that anymore. But this. You know, I think there has to be an opportunity for, for special circumstances, just like you said, if it's a custody issue or, but it's hard to predict exactly what would fall in that category. I mean, I don't know how you would not have something that allowed people to appeal given extenuating circumstances that don't fall under some of those, you know, letters A through D. Do you, well, Ms. May I, is there, we don't current like with school choice. We don't do we not currently have a committee that might a reassignment committee. The reassignment committee would would have this purview as well. Yes, they'd have these charges absolutely because an undue hardship would come to the reassignment committee if they, if they apply for reassignment for an undue hardship, then they would have to prove the hardship. The reason I think this language is in here because the legislature wants choices for kids. Yes, I know. They, they want them to have a, a lot of picking and choosing and switching and showing up at this school. That's what they want. That's why they've kind of spelled this out like this. Yeah, the legislative conver just if I might, the legislative conversation had a lot to do with yes, you can play basketball at one school and move and play baseball at another. Yes. What you said you can do. This is talking about the same sport. It's the same, this sport. Is the yes. same sport. So did you get upset with the baseball that, that coach? Was, yeah. That my example being right. Their intention would be to grant as mu as much flexibility. And, and, and as next possible. year they're saying the law is going to say you can show up at any school you want and participate, whether you, no matter where you live. You can live in Gaston County. 
to show up. But now, right. if I, we I, have capacity, and we we'll have to define that. Right. Well, and, and I'm thinking still the student would have to be assigned to that school by the district because we still have zones, right? Right. <laughs> 500 kids couldn't show up at child's and say, where's my seat? We have to define capacity for that, yeah. In the past, did, weren't there, so a kid could be reassigned, but didn't you have a special group that met to determine if they could participate in athletics, even if they were reassigned during the school year, and now you're combining all that? That's what was shot down by the legislature. Some districts, they had an athletic review committee right. where certain people would sit and determine, was this child recruited or not? And if, if there was no proof that he was recruited, we allow them to, to participate. Or we said you have to sit out a year if you transfer. You can you can go to Leon or Gabby, but you can't participate for a year. Well, that was the whole issue for this, because the legislature said we're not doing that, and they also said boards can't pass rules that supersede theirs. You can't. We can't pass anything stricter than what they've they've told us. And, um, Ms. Triplin. Thank you. I, I think for, I think we've had for the sake of moving this along. I think we've all agreed. This, we, there just needs to be some clarification. It would be my suggestion that if, for A, if we mean whole family, we say whole family. We find a way to say that. And we define it. We define it. If that's what you want to say there, we need to define it without any gray area. And my suggestion for D would also be if you want it to apply to kids who applied for a magnet and then got accepted 10 days, in the, then we need to define that and be specific. The E and F are kind of the out clauses where, like the superintendent said, there's going to be some extenuating circumstances. There's things out there that we can't predict with, with kids. And so that's when that is up to the superintendent. However, I might say undue hardship and super special assignment by superintendent that might be combined into one. There's some kind of special application process where they can go to the superintendent and say, but I don't fall under these categories. However, look at what's happened. And, and doesn't that apply? And then, we, and then we leave it at that. I mean, I think it just... That would be my suggestion. Okay. okay. Ms. Rasmussen? Uh, two thoughts. One, if you mean whole family, somewhere there needs to be a provision for spousal separation or... That, that's, that's in there. Back. Uh, C, children who move court order change due to custody, separation, or divorce. But it's not always court That's order. the next page up. C. Uh, yeah. Is it always court ordered? Usually a divorce is, isn't it? Well, okay. Yeah, but the dual, dual co-parenting and dual right. That's residency. Right. In that case, when they have joint custody, that the kid establishes residence once he moves in with mom and mom lives in the Lincoln zone and he starts at Lincoln. Now he's established his residency at Lincoln. So that if he moves back to dad, it's got to fall under one of these um, other provisions. To be eligible immediately and typically I think what happens is the kid says I'm gonna live with my permanent residence is with mom I'm going to Lincoln that's where mom lives I also happen to go back and forth every other week right but they stay at Lincoln but I'm, I'm just saying I think some kind of clarification um, oh, I had another thought that I wanted to oh Without mentioning any specifics I'm sure a good number of us will remember a very specific incident where a certain sport and a certain coach and a certain set of students um, were transferred probably under the provision of number F uh, for good cause. And that may be, I don't know how we're going to define good cause, but if, uh, or undue hardship, I'm sorry. But maybe there's another provision um, that needs to anticipate that sort of circumstance okay. where a student was being bullied or harassed by the coach and 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 was well on his or her way to a scholar college scholarship in that sport okay that, be the superintendent okay. Yeah. That, yeah we've had that before like where mm -hmm. parents have gone to the superintendent and said look my child's been we've, we've reassigned they've been reassigned to a different school by the okay. superintendent yes superintendent. Okay. And, that, and that that could be the superintendent's call as correct well. Special reassignment by the superintendent. All right. Is that, Mr. Superintendent, that is the kind of circumstance you would anticipate? Yes, ma'am. Approving? Okay, I just want to make sure. Thank you. And yes, Mr. Bell, divorces are mandated by court. But um, frequently there's a separation before a divorce happens. Mm, right. so. <laughs> and that may or may not be mandated and by court. <laughs> not court. I just want you to know I'm listening. Correct. That's okay. all. Okay. All right. Okay. So it looks to me as if 2431 .01 needs to be reworked just a little bit and we have a number of um, 
can we work policies in 18.03, but that particular one, it sounds as if we need to, from the comments you've heard, do just a little reworking. Is that where you are on that? Yes, Okay. All right. Go right ahead then. Okay. Next is um, Athletic Injuries Prevention and Treatment Program. Mm -hmm. um, the legislature saw that a lot of these athletic trainers were popping up all over the state as uh, working in schools. We've, been, we've had trainers for over 20 years in our schools. Originally, they started as a supplement only at the school. They worked at TOC part of the day. Probably in the last 10 years, uh, they all have worked at a particular school as a certified teacher. Okay, So the legislature felt that because of all of these trainers and the need for them in schools, they had to come up with a, a statute or something that governed <laughs> their ability to, to treat our children. So um, some of the qualifications that they require is that they hold a certificate. They're licensed as an athletic, certified athletic trainer. They hold a teaching certificate of some kind, professional, temporary, part-time, substitute. They undergo a background check and they also come under the direction of, a, of a, a certified physician with written protocols. We've been doing that for 10 years. All of ours in my office have a file. I've got their license. I've got their written protocol. You know, I've got, uh, they're, they're an employee, so, you know, they're a teacher, so they're certified and they have a background check. We also require them to have uh, professional liability insurance on themselves. Okay, in case they get sued, and I have copies of that. So this is something that we've been doing for a long time. We're kind of ahead of the curve in this area. Um, we just wanted to add this policy to, to what we already have in place. Okay. Questions, comments? None on that particular policy? Okay. Okay, the last one, 5610.05. Uh, it, it, this policy used to describe what kept you from playing athletics. Uh, if you're suspended or expelled, uh, if you've committed a felony of a certain degree, uh, you're, you know, you can't participate for so long. Well, we've changed it now to um, participation in extracurricular activities, and um, basically, this says we we will provide these these um, exemptions in the student code of conduct, and that's how we pr will present it to the public, and. Um, in our student code of conduct handbook, um, which basically tells the offenses that could keep them from playing sports. Okay, suspensions, expulsions. Uh, these uh, exemptions we listed here by a transfer student. Um, also, um, on the next slide, you can, you can go to the last one. Um, Again, if a student is expelled, they can't participate the, the time they're ex expelled. Uh, if a student... Um, participates in the same sport if they transfer unless they meet one of the criteria in policy 2431. Uh, and then a student's eligibility to participate in interscholastic activities may not be affected by alleged recruiting. If some other county or other school accuses a kid of recruiting in the past, they, the FHSA has held them up from playing until this was proven or not proven, which could take months. You can't you can't be um, exempt, you can't be eliminated from participation now if someone says oh he was recruited from this county or from this school that they continue to play until the final decision is made and the last one is um, extra characters oh if if a kid's playing for us it's a homeschool kid or a charter school kid is playing in our program which they can uh, they have to follow our student code of conduct and our guidelines even though they are homeschooled or they attend a charter school or, you know, another school. Okay. okay. Questions? Further questions? So I guess it, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Just so at this time, I'm going to, I guess we are going to pull item 2431.05. Yes. Is that correct? Oh, one. Zero one. I'm sorry. Right. Zero one. one. For reworking. Um, yes, that's what I hear us doing, right. and at this point, we can go ahead and vote on the other policies that are in 18.03. Oh, I okay. thought we need to pull the whole agenda item. We, well, the I superintendent think. saying that he's going to pull that one. The question is whether Ms. Lewis Butler, who moved, and Ms. Rasmussen, who seconded, are okay but, but, with the amended motion and second. Before we vote, you might look at 56105 because it references 
uh, uh, well, in light of twenty four thirty one oh one. Well, we might pull the whole thing. It does reference it, but once we change that, right? One, once we change it, it'd be fine, right? Right. It'll be I think fine. so. I it, don't. And it's a current policy, correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. So it's the former version until it's amended. Correct. Okay. So do we need to amend the motion to exclude this? You can formally do that, or what I was doing was our the mover and the seconder. If they're comfortable with the amendment, then that's fine. Or you can go back through and amend your motion to list everything but that one. Yes. List Are you everything. Are comfortable doing that, Ms. Lewis Butler? Yes, I can, I'm comfortable okay. with so it. So can you okay. redo your motion, so including everything but that one, but 20, 2431.01? 101. 18.03. Mm -hmm. Okay, except for... Is that 56105 or 2431.01? Right. Second. Oh, okay. okay. Was it's, that the only one? Uh -huh. Yes. That's, that's the it. only one that's It's been, been moved and seconded that with the exception of 2431.01, which will be pulled. All in favor? Uh -huh. Let it be known by stating aye. 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 Opposes nay. It passes <coughs> unanimously. Okay. Thank you, uh, Ms. Thank Bell. you. Good discussion. And this is not the Boy Scout. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's okay. what we're trying to keep it from being. All right. 18.04 for <laughs> Dennis and Fleming Engineering, short form agreement, Rickers High School. Stage lighting system. Is there a motion? Mr. Connor coming up. Oh, I didn't see him moving. Thank you, Mr. Connor. Don't don't let me stop you. You're doing on, great. Connor, if you want to move on through this. <laughs> Uh, good evening. 1804 good evening. is McGinnis and Fleming Engineering Sciences. It's a short form contract. They are currently under a continuing service contract with us. This is for uh, design uh, and for design for renovation of the stage lighting at Rickards High School. And the contract is for $6,219. We have approval. <clears throat> second. Moved by Stripling, second by Wood. All in questions? None. All in favor, state aye. 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 Opposes the same. It passes four. 18.5. 18.05 is for Dewberry slash Preble Rish. This is under a continuing service contract. It is for stormwater design at Buck Lake Elementary School. Uh, the contract is for $2,600. And just so you understand why, if you remember during uh, the hurricane, we had a storm stormwater structure blowout there. <clears throat> and we did some immediate action under an emergency services contract to fix that. They are going to do a design to prevent that type of thing in the future should we have another mag storm of that magnitude. Move approval. Move by Strickland, second. second by Wood. Questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed the same. Passes four. 18.06 is for ram construction uh, under their continuing service contract uh, for Buck Lake Elementary School to execute the stormwater fix that will be designed by the previous action. And our estimate for this is $92,647.26. Move approval. Second. <coughs> Moved by Wood, second by Stripling. Questions? None. All in favor say aye. 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 Passes four. 18.07 is for Rippy Construction. This is under their emergency services contract. A few months back, you will remember we brought the item to you. It was for Chairs Elementary School, the radio, again, after the storm, the radio tower removal. Um, and this is deductive change order one for return of the unused funds in the amount of $11,397.44. Move it. Moved by Lewis. <clears throat> Second. Second by Striplin. Questions? None. All in favor say aye. Aye. Tell me once again, what's a guide mast? Uh, it was a radio tower. It has guidelines, the steel cables that come down and hold okay. it in place. With the wires. Got it. 18.08. Thank you. Point zero eight is the same project, Rippy Construction, Emergency Services Contract at Chairs, and this is release of retainage since the project is complete. Move approval. Moved by Stripling. Second. second by Lewis Butler. Questions? <clears throat> Hear none. All in favor say aye. Aye. It passes four. 18.09 is uh, MLD Architects. This is contract award in the amount of $54,540 for the cent design of the central kitchen roof replacement. It was a standalone selection, and we are recommending that the actual work, when we get to that, will be done by hard bid. Move it. Move by Lewis. Second by Striplin. <coughs> oh, I had a question. But yeah, I'll a second. Question. Question. Yet, yeah, um, just quickly, the, and I think I see the, actually the answer. The when we approved the estimated construction budget, the six hundred ninety was kind of eye raising. We talked a little bit about why and the size of the facility. The 
architectural fee is not included in that original estimation, right? That's just Correct. construction. Correct. Okay, so the architectural fee comes on top of that. Yes. Okay. On top. Darn. All right. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposes the same. Passes five unanimously. Go right ahead. 1810 is for CRA Clemens Rutherford and Associates contract award in the amount of $62,481 for the roof replacement at Pineview Elementary School. This is for the design work. Um, the estimate for construction on this is $545,000, and we will also recommend a hard bid on that one. Move it. Moved by Lewis, second by okay. Rasmussen. Questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. 1811 is for Barnett Franzak Barlow Architects. This is contract award in the amount of $220,313. This is for the Cobb Middle School roof replacement on buildings 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, wow. and 9. All of them. Our estimated construction cost on this is $2.4 million. And on this one, we're going to, we will, we're recommending that we go with a construction manager. Questions? Motion. Oh, painfully. Move approval. Move by Striplin. Second. Second by Question. Rasmussen. Question by Striplin. Is there a reason why there's so many roof projects on this <laughs> agenda? I mean, is um, it, do they it's it's just just the cycle when okay. we, when we get to them and we try and get a lot of them started right before school gets out and run roof jobs over over the summer. So it's okay. just the cycle when they happen. So that so this is something that we normally see yes. to kind of glump together like this. Okay, thank you. But real quick, do we have any idea? Danny, uh, maybe when the last time Cobb had major roof replacement like this, what's the normal cycle? Is it 20 years, 30 years? Okay. Um, vote. It's been moved and second. I think that was the question, <laughs> right? Yeah. Is it <laughs> all in favor? All in favor. <laughs> Aye. 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 Sorry. It passes unanimously. Thank you. Mind All them. right. <laughs> Mr. Connor is not at the podium. 18.12 is an amendment to the 2016-2017 uh, school board meeting calendar dates. Are there any changes? I think you have seen those dates. Move approval. It, move approval. Moved second. by Wood. Second by Lewis Butler. Questions? Correction comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Proposes. It passes five unanimously. Information items, financial statement, reports from board liaisons, none. Superintendent's comments for today's date. No, I'm looking forward to our uh, retreat. Oh, me too. Me too. Well, and you know, that is scheduled for January the 23rd. We're going to be at Lively. We're starting at 8 o'clock. We're going to be talking a little bit later on about our topics and stuff, so we'll just hold that until we get there. Reports from board liaison, school board member Roseanne Wood, continuing concern? Um, we agreed yesterday that I would just bring up my concerns and my priorities, so I won't s take the time now. Cause it, oh, okay. Because I wanted to talk about wow. a recess policy, so I'll just bring it up in my continuing concerns. All right. I mean, then. And, and when we do our priorities for the board. Meeting. All right, then. Uh, and so now we're at item 22.02. And that item was on there because as a result of our discussion yesterday, when we were looking at the list of possible topics for our retreat, we decided that at that time, from a list of some 38 items, we would come back with three items of uh, priority. I do wish, though, as I looked at this information last night, that I would have suggested a strongly sent a note that said please give us your top 10 priority <laughs> yeah you want really to say that too i know it i know it i know it but when i discovered that dr gale had already sent this out it was too late so i can imagine what this is going to be like in a little while so let's do this let's go along with what we decided to do with the three items and if we get in the quagmire that i think we might get into then we can go to the uh 10 with 10 being the top priority and work down that way is that sound does that sound like a jumping off point Don't is that just, too painful it, no it's fine that's fine i hear that's fine so yes miss Resmusa. i think that works fine I, my only concern is we all have our our priorities yes. some of these though may be more time sensitive than others so that's i'm right. comfortable with 
if you did if you did the top ten and mm -hmm. there was great overlap, yeah, that that might help us prioritize. Yeah. But in addition, if there is something that's particularly, you know, more time sensitive, yeah, I and agree. or and my other thought is, if we had a philosophical discussion with the superintendent and there was great consensus, that gives the staff the top opportunity to go ahead and run with it. Yes. And not wait until we get to it. So I just absolutely want to throw those out as yeah. options. And and, and 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 we're working toward the same goal, I believe. Uh, and and I was just thinking that you know ten would have been a good sampling, better than the three that we decided on. But anyway, we go with this now, okay? So Dr. Gale, are you available? You're going to be writing down what we say. Um, so we're going to just. You may ask a question first, because yes. I picked the specifics that I was yeah. most interested in, but. Haven't we already agreed that one of the things we were going to work on as a retreat is our way of work? Right. Do we have to list that as one of our three, or is that just a given that that's part of what we're going to do? Well, if we decided it is a given, then I have some listing things under there. So the way of work for me would be numbers 14 and 15, which talked about the way of work. So, yes. But that's that's a given that that's part of the reason okay. for the retreat is that that's we're right. going to be talking about our way of work, correct? Right. So okay. scratch off one, fourteen, and fifteen. That's right. So that would be automatically off because that's what I've got on my list first. So okay. let's do this so Dr. Gale doesn't get what's that word beyond confused, which she would not discombobulated. That's what my mama would say, discombobulated. Okay. Anyway, that's not a word, Miss Blomley. Don't you use that? <laughs> okay. So. Um, who wants to start? Well, I'll start. all right, go ahead, Ms. Striplin. You're number one. Um, and before I start, I think it's important to say that I know we all have concerns, and none of them is more important than anybody else's. So I think right. um, some of you guys have been voicing certain things for 10 years, um, Ms. Yes. Wood and I, you know, for maybe a couple of days. Um, <laughs> and so I think it's important to point out that nothing on this list hopefully will be skipped. That's it just right. may be put, there's just no way, and with a new superintendent mm -hmm. who has his own concern, there's no way that we can possibly cover all these topics. So I hope that we can all agree to be patient with each other and yes. work together and cover them when when they are going to be covered. Absolutely. That said. Let me quickly uh, add to okay, that, that go. on that second retreat date, we have a retreat date all day on the 23rd, yeah. and then we're coming up with a second retreat four-hour day on a date in February. Yes. So it is my desire and hope that we will cover all of these topics. So the ones that we don't get to on the 23rd of January, we will cover them at a second date on, in February. Yep. So today we're coming up with whatever we come up with, and then we'll see where we go from there. Yes. Let me ask a quick question, not to interrupt you, Mr. Pa. But it seems to me that a number of these can be sort of lumped together. I would agree. Well, that, and like, we can do that. So it's like when we're, if we're talking about number five, and that which is future development go, it seems to me to go along with number where did it go six where we just were and number seven even when we're talking about property development so i felt the same way when well, i looked at it let's let's do this and i think you're right let's do this very quickly could we let's just hear what we've got and and not try to make statements about what we want to do if we look at the list that Dr. Gale gave us, it's so hard, I know, and we say under, my number one is number 14 and 15, okay, and, and, and list them by numbers, and that will be coming from the sheet that she gave us, the white sheet here. What are you looking at? Oh, you're looking at the yellow sheet? Okay. You, you, you see what I'm saying? And that way, she can take note of what we're doing and see how many same numbers will be and start to prioritize. All right. And I would agree. I think probably, Dr. Gale, you can look at this list and start to cons consolidate yes. a couple of things. And I think you'll, I think when we talk about it. So okay. my three would be um, construction. Th these are things that I've talked about for at least six months. Um, construction bidding versus selection process. That would be a top on my mind. Okay. Um, I think that um, I would love eight. to have that discussion. Um, my number two would be mandatory recess, um, which I would urge would be a short discussion. I don't think we need a lot of information given on that. Okay. Um, I think it's a quick... I think it's a quick conversation. Um, I think we all have a lot of same feelings on that. Um, and then my third, I put way of work, Sterling Council, and I kind of rambled a little bit here because it encompasses a lot. And I think this all goes into our discussion with Superintendent on his philosophy of a lot of things that we've been discussing for the past, you know, years. 
year or so and how efficient is our district and where we where are there some savings in my mind it's all about teacher salary where can we save and and put money into our teacher salaries okay um, so those would be mine okay hang on miss lewis what, what, miss gail dr gail did you get those numbers all right ready miss lewis go with your numbers okay number one increase all graduation rate with a focus on the african-american male what number was that? Number one. All right. Increase. <laughs> wait, 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 Miss Lewis. Hold on. Okay. On this, on this sheet, would you look to the left of the number? And now, if it's not on this sheet, she's writing it anyway. No, I don't see it on this sheet, Ms. but Lewis, she's writing it down. Miss Lewis. Miss yes. Lewis. Yes. Lewis. Right here yes. at twenty-eight. Number twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Doctor okay. Gale. Okay, but I want it written uh, to make sure that it focuses on the on the African American male. I don't want just a standard statement about graduation rate. It's a reason why Jesus. we're focusing on the rate. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. With a focus on the African American males. Okay. Okay. Next one. All right. Number two. Uh, New Southside High School. That's number ten. Okay. <coughs> And number three, let's see what I have here. Uh, something I have about data. Pro uh, provide data that communicate the success rate of the various programs and magnet programs in all schools. Let's see, where might that one fall it's on the numbers? data? It should be up on the data. <coughs> okay. I, I like a yearly report, an uh, annual report on on programs in all schools um, that communicate the success rate of the various programs. Okay, um, help us just a little bit there. That is important, it is. Look at this sheet and see if you can help us decide which number. Okay. Look at, look at that sheet very quickly if you don't mind and see if you can just help us decide which number under the listings that we have here that that might fall under. We can come back to that. For your for our talent, Dr. Gale, okay? All right, Ms. Lewis, thank you. That, that's good as long as it, long, Just a minute, um, mm -hmm. uh, Madam Chair. All right. And just make sure it's recorded. That's all. Okay. That's all. Ms. Wood? All right. Thank you. Okay. Like like Ms. Butler Lewis, I did mine a little bit differently, so I'm trying to juggle now to make it fit into this okay. Uh, box. Okay. Um, so I guess my first one was policies for youngest children, which was would be elimination of A through F grading in K2, and I believe that's number 27, okay. elimination of A through F grading, yes, and recess. So those are combined together. Okay. Um, number two says equity funding for school budgets with a thorough review of resources available at schools. I also particularly wanted to, I guess it's just what Ms. Triplin was saying is, really looking at our school resources and seeing what we can push out to the schools. Okay. 33. 33. Uh, 33. That's 33. 33. Very good. Okay. And um, my other one was about, it sort of combines two, which is uh, school climate and collaborative leadership development. They, um. they sort of go together. Creating a good school climate involves really working with our leadership to create that sort of collaborative approach. So, uh, 18, 18, 18 will be school climate, okay. So it combines school climate 18 26, with 26. 18 and 26, all yes. right. Okay, thank you. We are thinking alike. Ms. Rasmussen. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, 19 is yours. <coughs> I think 17 and 19 can be combined, and um, okay, I uh, yeah, they could be. Just say um, what they are out loud. So, to I'm sorry. This is the the str our strategic plan pillar reports along with the Florida Sterling Council, and um, I didn't want to start with that. I wanted to end with that because I would really rather not be talking about any of that. But I feel very compelled to say that we have to. Yes, so, of course. Um, and then number 25, we made a commitment to do a study, and I think we need to talk about um, that. Say that what it is here. I'm sorry, ah. a commitment to do a study regarding um, age-appropriate school start times. And then I would say, because it seems more comprehensive than some of the others, number 36. 
I'm sorry. I, I think uh, Dr. Gale is asking how you're ranking these. Is that your number one, your number two, your number three? Okay, the school start times, only because I'm having to choose. Don't get, don't, I don't want anybody to think that this isn't as important as many other things like over testing, for tool. example. But the school start times item 25 would be, I guess, my number one. Number 36, because it talks about pathways to graduation and other programs, would be my number two. And because I feel compelled to make sure that we keep this in the forefront, I would like to combine number 17 and 19 into my third priority. Which are what? Okay. Which is strategic the strategic plan, plan, pillar? plan pillars and the Sterling Council. All right. Great. Good. Okay. We're going to get to all of them. My turn. My turn, Mr. Superintendent. You want to go? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Uh, my number one on the way of work, I've combined 14 and 15. Number one, 14 and 15. My number two, under the heading of budget, I have numbers 20, 33, 34, and 24. <laughs> budget, everything that dealt with budget, I thought, let's discuss budget. And in my mind, I want to know the way it works, how we're going to work. And in my mind, I want to know if we got some money to work with. And my number three, in my mind, I want to know the superintendent's philosophy. So that's number 36. And so that, for me is even more encompassing than the statement that is written here beyond the seventh period day, what, what, what his philosophy is, okay? That's how I saw this. All right, Mr. Superintendent. One thing that I think would help is if Dr. Gale could reach out to you on your top three just to clarify exactly what, from what you're looking for so that when we come, we're prepared to address exactly what you're talking about instead of just having a broad topic this is these are the things I'm looking for in this category and if it's self-explanatory it's self-explanatory but if there are certain just to make sure we we have or are providing the information that you that you expect that you want okay so she'll be reaching out to each one of you individually giving your top three just to make sure to clarify um, any anything that um, that we can do to be prepared for that day okay Miss Rasmussen Okay, uh, and thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Well, I think that's where we were going to try and go. And I know that there are some topics still left on this list that none of us mentioned. We want to have those topics discussed as well. So it looks to me, since we only came back with our top three, then we're going to have to do this again, or we need to say we're going to have to cull all this information and put it in some order because all of these topics are important to some ones of us, okay? Oh, Ms. Rasmussen. Mr. Superintendent, would it make more sense to put the Sterling discussion off until February? Does, I do think we so. I would like to yeah, having like some to hear more information back. from them by before by then. So they're, they're going to start up Merrill Wynn tomorrow. Yeah, so we meet with them tomorrow. They're going to get started tomorrow. So I think after we hear back from them, I think it makes a little more sense to see. Okay, this is this is what they provided us. This is what it cost us. You know. Do we get the bang for the buck we expected, and where do we go from here? I have another time-sensitive question. Yes. Uh -huh. It was brought up tonight when uh, Ricky Bell gave his presentation. That's the whole issue of the school choice legislation that That's we're right. going to be faced with. And, you know, I, I wanted to put it on my top because I know we've got to deal with that in a way that really looks at that. So I guess I'm throwing it out as a fourth, but if it's time-sensitive, it I'll might need to go to the top. I'll amend... If we'll, if you'll, with a commitment that we'll talk about Sterling at the second okay. gathering, All I right. would be happy to move the co the conversation about school choice and how we're going to handle that okay. to the January meeting. All right, we can do that. Okay. So, Dr. Gale, what have you got for us? Without um, having a good sample, and I can't wait to hear what we have. <laughs> Maybe an email would be better. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I was joking. <laughs> Don't joke. Okay, I won't joke anymore. <laughs> Please joke, Joy. I'm going to have it ready. She okay, ready. all right. Woosa. Um, <laughs> now, thank you all. Let me tell you what I'm hearing. On either the 23rd and or the February date, all of these items will have been discussed. We're trying to get some idea of what's the priority that we need to discuss first. Dr. Gale is going to get back with us some information and we will probably have to take another look okay I appreciate what you've done we're working this through we're gonna know where we're going and I think we're off to good footing don't you yes all minds clear yes sir thank you all miss wood we're ready for your 
No uh, issue. No, no, we're done. I mean, that, that I, was think, it. I think we, we decided we yesterday done? we were all going to oh pull goodness. together and bring up. So I'm Wonderful. Fine. Then Ms. Rasmussen suggests we rise. I do. No, no, not oh, yet. Oh, wait, not yet, Ms. Not Lewis yet. Butler. Yeah, I have one announcement to make, uh, Madam Chair, and school board and superintendent. Um, starting um, February the 18th, 2017, uh, we're creating a teen summit. It's called Teens Overcoming Pressure. Uh, we have met uh, the National Hookup of Black Women Incorporated. Uh, the president is Dr. Ada Burnett. And uh, Reverend Dr. Renita Dixon is, uh, has been appointed over this project. And this project is going all over the United States. But on the same day of February 18th, this summit would take place with teens. And here in Leon County, we are looking at doing the same thing. And I want to commend Superintendent Hannah for uh, becoming a part of this project. Um, this project is uh, needed for our teens today. And some of the topics are literacy, teen dating and violence, healthy relationships, and many more domestic violence, things that many of our teens are going through today. And this will be held at Rickers High School, and the middle school and all the high schools are invited. All the principals of the middle school and the high school have been spoken to and they're aware of this program. A teen summit, February the 18th, 2017, at Rickers High School. Uh, all, all of you invited. Thank you, Ms. Lewis Butler, that is important. May I just also add to that announcement, which was an important one, another important one, and that is the MLK breakfast that's going to be held this Friday which we have our students coming to. And if you've not purchased your ticket, I'm certain that you want to do so. And it's $20 and Dr. Rogers was here. I'm certain she could. She gone. She's gone, but that's all right. We need to do a shout out for that. It's that's important. Right. These are dreamers and doers. Thank you so much. Ms. Ma Madam. Yes. We just noticed something. Well, I'm just, I, back to the idea of time sensitivity. Um, a couple of things in our stack tonight. One is the legislative platform which I'm, unless it happened when I was out of the room, I don't think we talked about tonight. And the other is the school calendar. Um, the legislative platform. I, I think the school calendars were given out to us as part of the um, report from the DAC. Is that not true? No, it was just, okay. What was that? All right. The well, it, it, what, looking what we at the timeline, it looks like um, the draft it would be on our agenda on February 14th. So I wonder, do, is that something we need to talk about at the January retreat? Uh, the calendar for 17, 18, well. Historically, the superintendent and or staff provide a proposed calendar to DAC and they opine on it. But I, as I mentioned yesterday, got more, have received more calls this year than normal. And I'm wondering if we don't ourselves want to have a conversation about it. Madam Chair, Superintendent, and Board members, if you recall on yesterday, um, the question was asked, what is the timeline for the 2017-2018 school calendar? That information was provided to you as well as the options um, for the school calendar. Um, following that timeline, everyone has an opportunity at the school level, students, parents, to voice in, there is a survey monkey that was set up and it opened up on January the 4th. That survey monkey will close on January the 20th. At that time, um, a very diverse committee um, that's made up of school, district, parents, community members, they will meet, look at the information, look at option one, two, and three, not for the purpose of this got the most votes or this got the most votes. We're looking at what's best for students. And I want to go back if I can. Those options were, um, I guess, formatted based upon input that 
our stakeholders had given. So after that committee looks at all of the information that has been provided, then um, they will make a one calendar suggestion to DAC, and traditionally that one suggestion will be brought forth for approval by this body so that we can advertise and adopt the school calendar for 17-18. So just to clarify, uh, the board has no voice in any earlier version until it shows up on our agenda after it's gone through DAC and we can vote it up or down or amend it ourselves after that? I'm just Maybe wondering if we don't want to have an earlier conversation. Well, we can't. I assume y'all have been doing this for a number of years now. Has this been the... <laughs> In, in the past, my understanding, and last year was the first year that I led this effort, the board approves, it, it goes through all the stakeholders, and then the board, after DAC has approved the calendar, because it comes to the board for final approval. Uh -huh. Right, That's and right. since it's a new day, Mr. Superintendent, I'm just suggesting that maybe at the retreat we want to have a conversation around some of the objections that I've heard and maybe some of the others, and I... I I appreciate the idea that there are many, many stakeholders that weigh in on this, and we talk about that a lot, that it went through all these stakeholder surveys and it went to DAC and so on and so forth. Um, but ultimately, we're the ones held, accounts, held accountable. Uh, I have no objection to it being part of our discussion at the uh, retreat, <laughs> and I'm thinking how I missed this in the agenda. It was not an agenda, no. and I, it no. was here for us to <laughs> review. We just but, brought it up but, yesterday. But, okay. Let's put it on the agenda, the retreat, retreat agenda. They, yeah, let's do that so that we can get additional. And, and what it that, came right? up during Ms. Collier-Brown's report that there was a lot of discussion about the calendar at the DAC meeting. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes, there was some discussion, but as uh, Dr. Gail just mentioned to, to you all, we were going to discuss it. They were instructed we to agenda. go to the... Yeah. Their SAC, SAC. Yeah. and give their point of views, and then she will bring it back to us during the talk next DAC meeting, yeah. and we will discuss it from there. Seems like one thing we can do is talk to our DAC reps. We all have DAC reps. We do. Okay. Yeah. We That'd do. be a way for us to give some input early, but they're there for, I but, like and, that. and let them still be able like to to, okay. to make all the right. decision. But let's let's you know, do all right. of the above. Talk to our DAC reps, and to the extent that we want this as part of a discussion have it there as well. Not the other thing was the time. legislative uh, platform. So we, we formed a committee. We met about, about a month and a half ago yes. for the first time. You want to explain to them briefly yes. that process and where we are? Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. The superintendent convened a committee of uh, district directors uh, in particular areas, and he also appointed some steering people, if you will, to take all of the information that has been shared by respective areas. Jillian Gregory, Jessica Lowe, and myself, um, we serve in that role. So with this diverse group of district um, employees with respective areas, we have asked them to look into their respective associations, colleagues around the state. Um, we also looked at some legislative platforms from other districts and other organizations within the state so that we could then um, tie our respective areas uh, are concerns, and we've listened to what you've also had to say, the superintendent, what he's also had to say, and we tied those to our strategic plan. So as you look at this, this was the final draft that we came up with today. So you'll see strategic plan, which pillar it's talking about, and which specific goal. And from there, we'll be working with Mixon and Associates so that we could come up with what our legislative platform, which is also one of the areas that you've identified within um, things that you want to talk about during the workshop slash retreat and we wanted to share that information with you today. This is hot off the press and at the superintendent's um, request we wanted to provide that to you today and it has draft on it. So thank you. Yeah. Is it okay. possible that we could bring this up at the next school board meeting just to give some input on it? We can well yes we can do that our gonna... agenda but but let, let, let me make certain we're not, we're not voting on this no, tonight. No, 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 no. I just, no, we just since we haven't even looked at it. to do that right, okay? So we want to agenda this, look at it, 
like agenda to. for discussion so that we get input into it, additional input? Is that what I'm hearing, Ms. Like Triplin? A brief discussion, uh, a, a brief point of interest. It, so I think the confusion comes in as we have documents in front of us that when we were going through, I kept thinking maybe they would come up somewhere and they didn't. So if, you're, if we're going to have something put in front of us, may, I don't know if we can put this under reports, but, it, but just a brief, hey, you have this in front of you to look at. This is what it entails. You know, so the, that would apply to the school calendar and the legislative platform tonight. Doesn't have to be lengthy, just a notation so we have a chance to say, oh, this is why we have this. Okay, Ms. Yes, Rasmussen. Suggestion. Mm -hmm. And I know this, this year is a bit of an anomaly, but moving forward, looking toward next session, if we could look at the FSBA timeline when we're invited right. to weigh in on what our priorities are that we would like the FSBA to consider to be a part of their legislative platform. Yes. Um, it's that. The train. It was. That we're train has it, gone. It, right. It <laughs> left. It left months ago, yeah. and we are wait. We're we're behind, but we we, we, but we did want to we did want to have a voice, and we did want to make a statement and listening to you all as well and your concerns. So at least we had something coming from our school system. But yes, we need to start much earlier next year. And the superintendent has already talked to us about that, and we're going to start working on that a lot earlier. Right. Okay. Further comments? Maybe we adjourn. It's time to we adjourn. Thank you.